don't get discouraged when you grow crops and you lost your crop and don't throw the towel in because you lost that crop. Um, you have to learn and grow from that experience and whatever you did wrong that year, I can promise you, you won't do it the next year or the year after. Hey, farming is one of these businesses that you'll know less about farming after 40 years than you do after five years. At five years, you have all the answers. At four years, you just realize, hell no, there ain't no answers. They're just experience and a year to year way of doing so Like a great example is like, okay, I've been doing it for 39 years. I grow one crop of peas a year. So I mean, I grow peas 39 times. How good could I ever be at growing peas? I've only done it 39 times. Mm. No, I'm not that good, mm. but I make it work. I've, I've watched, I've learned, and I've tried to adapt things to make it and keep it working. As the environment keeps changing, we gotta keep changing and adapting how we do that too. Our planting schedules all change. But if someone wanted to start farming, keep it small, keep it simple. Yep. Do not overthink things. Do not worry about losing a crop. Losing a crop is as natural as the seasons. It's yeah. just be diversified. And just keep it simple. And when you need help, the internet's okay. But seek help locally. Find people that are in your area that understand farming conditions in your area. Because talking to someone on the west coast, if you're out on the east coast, we farm completely differently over here than they do over there. So, yeah, you get ideas on organizing farms and stuff like that, but how we grow versus how they grow, it's, it's substantially different. But try and keep it as local as, pop, as possible. Talk to the local people. You'd be surprised how many farmers want to share their information. And most of all, take business and accounting classes. Yes. You need to know accounting. You need to understand money. Yep. Accounting classes. Before any agriculture class and before anything else, become an accountant. Don't even yep. become an accountant. Just get some ideas a lot. Yeah. Or have a really good accountant. Have a really good accountant. But you still have to yeah. have a pretty good idea on money. Yeah. Because you'll be short on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. For, to, I'm not going to lie to the farming community. There's times it's like, are we going to make payroll? I mean, yeah. this was two years ago. You know what I mean? But now we're in our good season where we've got it figured out where payroll will be made you know I mean it's when you're first starting out it's struggling yeah and it'd be adaptable I mean just because you think your system is the best it might not be be willing to change how you do things look at what other farmers are doing just mm. always be inspired by everybody else because you never know what you're gonna be able to grasp from their little bit and take home and adapt to your farm and just make it a little bit better this is not always about giant changes like going from hand weeding to cultivation most of the time it's the little things yeah. just finding out oh if i get soil testing wow my crops are so much better or understanding how much manures and compost to be applying without damaging or under damaging the soil and it's just there's so many little teeny things you gotta not so much know but you have to understand it's farming is about an understanding of what you're doing not so much knowing what you're doing if that makes any sense if you're a farmer i think it will when you're first starting out with cultivating equipment keep it really simple don't go out and buy a bunch of things just because you see everybody else has every toy under the sun oh, yeah. don't do it just get a couple tools get a tool for between rows a tool for in row and maybe a tool for doing wider walk rays or something mm. and when you're using that equipment start watching videos of other people using equipment and start imagining how that equipment would work in your system mm. and then just slowly buy equipment and start trying it and see if that works and if you have another local farmer nearby and you're curious about it most farmers will let you borrow a piece of equipment. If any farmer wants to come and borrow one of my cultivators at my farm, I'm always happy to let them borrow it for a few days to see if it's something they want to invest money into. Mm. You know, unless you got lots of money laying around to just go buy toys and see if it works, which there are people like that, and there's nothing wrong with that, but go to those people and borrow it. You know, test stuff out and be very, very observant of what you're doing. Get to understanding how your soil moves and your and how your weeds are growing and germinating. Then start looking at that other equipment and go, will this work on my farm? You gotta be a little imaginative and sometimes you gotta take a little bit of risk, but it's a lot better than just buying stuff because I said it's what you need. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of equipment I think everybody needs, but 
Is it practical? No, that's just because it works on my farm and it's what I like and I'm kind of a toy guy. But don't do what I do. Just keep it simple, figure it out, and you won't get upset with the amount of money you're spending. You'll just have good stuff. As he said too, uh, keeping it simple, meaning keeping your rows simple, like we touch base out there, you got to keep them uniform. You can't have 10 different spacings on your farm. Um, when I call Tillmore, he's like, hey, he goes, you're better off having two spacings on your farm. So I went to 16 and 32. My corn, uh, my beans, my peas, all that's on 32. All the cabbage, the lettuces, everything else is on 16. Once they grow, they're crowding out all the weeds. There's no sunlight getting in to promote weed growth. Um, just like you said, keeping it simple. You don't need 15 different measurements on your farm. No. Uh, I run two measurements on this farm, 16 and 32. That's and my, that's just it. work multiples of that. You yeah. know, it's if you want to go wider, you just you set your system up to the size of the equipment, and then you keep everything so every row can get accept the same equipment so you're not adjusting stuff constantly yeah best piece of advice i've ever gotten was that i yeah. changed everything yeah so now, you know, back when i was younger when joe had all these systems set up just even for wheel hose and stuff i never understood it but he was from back in the day when they're using horses and teams to do all their cultivating and he understood the reasons why and it wasn't until i started cultivating again mechanically that it clicked to me why he had everything set up the way he had set up. Yeah. It, it just, the knowledge just passed down to me, but I didn't know the reason why. And yeah. I was really happy it was already set up that way. So when I did start mechanically cultivating, it was already done for me. Nice. And I just figured it out. And have fun. Yeah. Have lots of fun. Farming yes. is a kick. It's a learning experience. Every year is new. It's it can be hard, it can be easy, but there's nothing more rewarding than seeing your crops coming up and the changing fields and seasons and having those struggles and failures. You know, it's, you remember every year. Mm. Every year is so different. It, it's just so fun to look back over the years and think about all that stuff. The, the rewards of it, it just, you can't beat it. It's wonderful.